Hello, welcome back to uh, Math 332 Linear Algebra. In this video, we are going to continue our discussions on row space, column space, null space of a matrix A. Um, and uh, in particular, we are going to look at how to compute the basis for this uh, vector spaces. And so let's get to it. Um, so remember, all these vector spaces always associated themselves with a matrix. So uh, this given the matrix A, these are known as the row vectors. And if you're looking at the, uh, the, the collections, uh, the set of all the linear combination of these row vectors, which means the span, the span of all these row vectors, then it form a vector space. We know that uh, how to prove that a long time ago. Span of any vectors are going to be a vector space. And this vector space is known as the row space of A. So instead of looking at the row vectors, if you're looking at the column vectors of this matrix A, and again, look at the uh, set of all its possible linear combinations, which means the span, then uh, again, you form a vector space, and that vector space is known as the column space of this matrix A. Now, space of A, however, is defined slightly differently. They are neither consist of the row vectors or the column vectors of a matrix, but instead, this is, uh, these are the uh, collections of vectors uh, which are the solutions for this homogeneous system. Okay, so you are, for the null space of A, you're looking at all the vectors uh, x such that A x equal to zero. So these are the row space, column space, and null space. So since they're all vector spaces, and vector spaces has bases, so uh, one of the things that we are going to do today, actually the main thing that we're going to do today, is to look at the basis of all these vectors. So before we do that, there are two very important theorems that can help us uh, establish uh, uh, this goal and achieving these goals. These are the theorems uh, which are known as 4.7.3 and 4.7.4. .4. So basically they are telling us that row operations, elementary row operations would not uh, change the null space of a matrix and it would not change the row space of a matrix. So what it says is that if you have a matrix A and you do a row operation to get to a matrix B, say for example, you are doing say uh, changing the second row of the matrix A by taking the second row minus four times the third row. So if you do that, then the null space of A and the null space of B are going to be the same. And um, the next theorem which says that the uh, elementary row operation also does not change, uh, also do not change the row space of this matrix. So which means that since we are doing one row operations to get from A to B, so the uh, row space of A by the theorem and the row space of B are actually the same. So not only just by looking at these uh, two matrices, uh, let's say you do uh, another row operation to get to C, then again, the null space of C is the same as null space of B, so it's the same as null space of A, and you can now see that uh, this is also the same for the row space, that's what the theorem say. So the row space of C is the same as row space of B, is the same as row space of A, and now you know where this is going, because usually when you are given a matrix, you always row reduces it all the way to the REF matrix. So let's say you get to the RREF matrix of A. So again, the uh, null space of the uh, RREF of A is the same as the null space of C, and the row space of the RREF of A is the same as the row space of C, which is all the way go back to the row space of A and null space of A. So what it says is that right here, if you have a matrix A, row reduces it to the REF matrix, then the null space of A and the null space of REF of A and the row space of A and the row space of the REF of A are the same. Now, this will help us uh, find a basis for this row space and the null space of A because now instead of looking at these two uh, vector spaces, we can look at their corresponding vector spaces. And you better hope that this vector space uh, is easier to identify what are the bases than this one. So that's the, the key point of this two theorem is to establish the fact that uh, uh, if you are asked to find uh, a basis for the null space of A, uh, what you need to do is just to uh, look at the REF matrix of A and you can find information from here. Uh, and you can also find information from here. Okay, so that's what the theorem tried to say. Now, you might be curious uh, that why this is true. Uh, let's look at the uh, row, row operations for the null space, okay? So let's look at theorem 4.7.3. So this is not a full proof. This is not a rigorous proof, but this kind of like motivates uh, why and kind of like give you a reason why 
the uh, elementary row operation would not change the null space of a matrix. So let's look at this computation right here on the left hand side. So these are very simple computations. You can check that these are all true. So once you have these two equations, um, I'm going to take this second equation here and multiply it by two. That's how I get this equation. And uh, then I'm going to take this first equation and subtract the second equation to get rid of this. So now I have this and I divide by five. Uh, I get this. So now uh, let's call this x. x is our one and let's call this y. Then you will get the corresponding uh, the corresponding system of equation. So I'm saying is that now all these equations here will be uh, will match to each other if you call this x, you call this y. And you can see, in fact, this is a typo here. So you can see, in fact, what we have done here is uh, what you basically do in high school algebra when you try to uh, solve system equations through method of elimination. So you see that uh, this correspondingly, if you call this x and y, if you call this x and y, we will have this equation right here. So by multiplying two to this equation, this is the corresponding equation in x and y. And you can see that by multiplying two to this equation and also subtracting these two equations, um, the answers, these are the answers, right? These are the x and y, these are the answers. The answers is going to be the same. All these answers is not going to be affected. So all these answers here are, are not going to be affected. All this y here, all the x here are not going to be affected simply because you're doing row operations. This uh, row operation would not affect the x and y. So it would not change the null space, whatever, actually not only that, like all the solutions for these equations will not change. The solution for the system of equation would not change if you do row operation on it. So in particular, the system of equations, linear equation, which is homogeneous, is try to root row operation on it to uh, get rid of the x, get rid of the other unknown equations, uh, other unknown um, will not affect the solutions. So, so that's the reason why the null space is going to be the same. So one way I want to think about it is that your x and y is hidden into a many layer of rocks. And what you do, a row operations, the row operation is kind of like you have a hammer and you have this tool which archaeologists use to uh, zizzle away all these layers. So at the end, you will get the answers x and y. Uh, but during the process of row operation, which is the process of, uh, uh, I can't say the words right, zizzering, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, it will not affect the, uh, the solutions. So, so this kind of explains why the null space of this the two sets are the same so you go back to here why is the null space not going to affect the uh, uh under the uh, elementary row operations that's kind of like a, a simple explanation uh, not very rigorous explanation but it kind of gives you some idea that why this is true the second theorem says that uh if you have say matrix a this is a row vector. So row vector is actually just R1 and R2. I'm doing this horizontal line just to indicate that this is a row vector. So let's say uh, your row reduces it to matrix B uh, by uh, doing this operation. So row one is still the same. Row two now is changed to uh, row two minus four times row one. And uh, what I'm claiming is that the row space of matrix B, so row space of matrix B is here. A by definitions, row space of matrix A is the same. Um, so bear in mind that this is not a set of two vectors. This is a set of the span of these two vectors. There are actually infinitely many elements in this uh, set. So this is a set with uh, infinitely many elements. This is a set with infinitely many elements. So in order to show that the two sets, the two spaces are the same. So the row space of A and the row space of B is the same. You actually have to show that this is a subset of this and this is a subset of this, meaning that every element in here will be in here. Every element that is in here will be in here, right? So um, one, I, I didn't write down it rigorously, but you can kind of see why this is true. So for example, this, uh, this set here has R1. Um, so we also have R1 here, but this sets here also have R2. So this whole set here has R2 because these are the sets of linear combination of R1 and these vectors. So in particular, if you take four of this and one of this, and uh, you can see that you can get R2. So R2 is actually in here. So the linear combination of R1 and this is actually all the linear combination that is from R1 and R2. Same thing also from the other side. 
this all the linear combinations that is coming from here will be the same as the linear combination of, of all these factors consisting of R1 and R2. And all the linear combinations here can be get from uh, uh, can be obtained from linear combining all uh, this vector here. So the linear combination of these two spaces are actually the same. So uh, I mean the linear combination of these two vectors create this space and it linear combination of these two vectors create this space and the two spaces is actually the same. You can, if you understand what I'm t talking about and you want to write this thing down rigorously, you can you can do that. It's not very difficult. It's just that uh, right here, I choose not to do it. Just kind of like give you an idea why these two row operations are the same. I mean, these two sets are the same uh, uh, by doing a row operations uh, on matrix A and matrix B actually will give you uh, the row space of A and row space of B uh, invariance. They are not going to change. Okay, so... So once we know these two facts, once we know these two theorem, we are able now to uh, find a basis for the row space of A and the null space of A. So what are the row space of A? Uh, which means that if you take all the row vectors and looking for uh, look at all the possible linear combination of these row vectors, it will form a vector space and we want to find a basis. So, so uh, again, this is kind of difficult to see. And, but one thing we can do from the theorem is to look at the row... Re REF matrix itself. So this REF matrix, okay, just concentrate and forget about these questions. Forget about the row space of A and the null space of A. Just concentrate on the row space of the REF of A. So from here, you can see that, first of all, you can see that this is redundant. This row vectors is redundant, okay? So we don't need them. So the row space of A is actually spanned by these three vectors, okay? So this is the span of these three vectors. And you can also check that these three vectors are linearly independent. Okay, they are linearly independent. So this is good because now we can find basis. So row space of REF of A is spanned by these three vectors, and these three vectors are actually linearly independent. You can, uh, how can you see that? It's, it's very easy to see that. Again, you can start it from definition k1 of this, k2 of this, k2 of this, and uh, set it equal to zero. Uh, zero, zero, zero vectors, right? And you can see that K1 has to be zero, K2 and K3, they all have to be zero. That's one very easy way to see that. So these three vectors can actually use to form a basis for the REF of A. And uh, the row space of the REF of A. And the row space of REF of A and the row space of A are the same. So the basis that you found here can be used as a basis uh, for the row space of A. So this is what they are trying to say here. So uh, by looking, by looking, at the row space of REF of A, which is something that's easy to do, way much, way much easier than looking at this matrix A, we get the conclusions that the uh, row space of the REF of A can have these three vectors as its basis. So therefore, uh, by theorem, these three vectors that's coming from here is actually also the basis, can be used as a basis for the row space of A because these two spaces are the same. Right, because these two spaces are the same, the row space of A and the row space of R, E, F of A is the same by theorem. So information obtained here can be used to get information for the matrix A. All right, and why do we do that? Because um, every time actually the information given by R, E, F of the matrix A is way easier to compute, way easier to extract information from R, R, E, F of A instead of A, right? Okay, because if you look at matrix A itself, you don't really see that one of the vectors is one of the row vectors is actually redundant. You can't see it so easily, but you will see it super easily uh, that uh, we have redundancy here. Now, uh, one of the questions, one of the questions is that we know that we have a redundant row vectors here. Can you say that this row vectors is redundant? Uh, that is a little bit tricky because the answer is in generally no. In generally, generally speaking, we do not know that because when you do row operations, one of the legit row operations is interchanging row. So this row, this fourth row of matrix A and the fourth row of matrix of REF of A might not be the same. They, they are not necessarily corresponding. Okay, so, so you can't really say that. So in general, what you can say is that I know the four vectors here, one of them is redundant. I don't know which one. It depends on what kind of row operation that you actually perform. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky. But in any case, I can always say that there are only three relevant vectors in the row space of A. 
there are only three in the, uh, important row vectors here that will form the uh, row space of A. Okay, so this is how we use this theorem right here, the second one, all right, uh, to help us solve this problem. And let's look at null space. So null space of A, uh, which is something that we is slightly harder, so we don't really want to do it that way. We look at the uh, null space of the REF of A. So definitions of the null space of the REF of A is the x vectors, the vector x, uh, that make this equation equal to zero. So that we know how to do. This is what we learned first week of class. Uh, you can write this system uh, in using augmented matrix, and now we can solve for it. So when we solve for it, these are the pivots. So when we solve for it, you get this equation. This is the solution. So immediately, just by concentrating in the null space of the REF of A, we know that the null space of the REF of A is spanned by these two vectors because all the solution looks like x4, a constant, multiply this vector, a constant, multiply this vectors. So the null space of the REF of A is spanned by these two vectors. And so the null space of A is also spanned by these two vectors because they are the same space. And also one more thing is that these two vectors are linearly independent. You can see that pretty easily. Uh, set k1 of this, k2 of this, and set it equal to zero vectors and solve for k1 and k2 because of the position right here, right? Say for the position right here, you can kind of like see that it's trivial. k1 and k2 has to be zero. So not only that, we can find a basis for this, may, uh, for this uh, null space, the basis for the null space of R, E, F of A pretty easily. And because of the theorem, this basis for the, uh, this basis right here, this basis right here, uh, basis for the R, E, F of A, is also the basis, uh, but the basis for the null space of the R, E, F of A is also a basis for the null space of A. So that's how you uh, uh, answer questions uh, like the example four. So how do you find a basis for the row space of A? Well, you find a basis for the row space of R, E, F of A, right? Okay, how do you find a basis for the null space of A? Well, you find a basis uh, for the null space of the R, E, F of A, and that will be, can be used uh, as a basis for the null space of A. Okay, so that's the part involving the null space and the row space of A, and you'll see that there's one thing they are missing. Okay, so this is slightly trickier. So the thing that is missing is what about column space? So column space, how do you deal with that? Right, so now, suppose we have a matrix A. This is slightly trickier, so uh, I'm going to go a little bit slower than usual and point out what are the difference. So now let's start with this example where A is uh, this matrix, which has six different columns, right? Column one, column two, all the way to column six. So, uh, uh, you can use a calculator to uh, obtain the RREF of this matrix A. That's the uh, RREF of the matrix A, which I call J. So I'm just going to call J. And I'm going to label the, the column differently. So this is our first column of matrix A. But this, are, this is the first column of the matrix J, second column, matrix J, third column, so on and so forth, right? Okay, now, okay. So uh, as always, the, uh, the row... Uh, the RREF matrix is easier, right? So they have many zeros, it's a lot of one, and you can see, first of all, this column, right? This column and this column are linearly independent. That's easy. These are kind of like IJK, right? But it's in R4. And you can see, obviously, D3 is redundant, D5 is redundant, which means the third column of J, fifth column of J, and the sixth column of J, they're redundant. Why? Because you can get them by linearly combining your D1, D2, and D4, right? For example, easily, you can see that D3 is three times D1 minus D2, right? Okay, D5 is two, it's so straightforward, you can kind of see it immediately. It's two times D1, two times the first column, of J minus the second column of J plus the fourth column of J. And D6 also the same. We can get that pretty easily. Okay, so we know uh, we know that D3, D5, D6 is redundant. We can get it from D1, D2, and D4. Now, so this is like very simple observations just by looking at the REF matrix. The reason why it's simple is because REF matrix is simple. So that's the reason why we're looking at it. Now, 
we know from previous example and the previous two theorem, the null space of A, null space of this matrix, and the null space of this matrix, they are the same. Uh, not only that, the row space of this matrix and the row space of this matrix is also the same. That's the theorem. Now, the question is, how about the column space? Can you say, can you say that the column space of A and the column space of J are the same? Right? So that's the question. So column space of A, right, and column space of J, these are the linear combination of all the column vectors. Are they the same? And the answer is no, they are not the same. Uh, so if we are, if we have class, uh, uh, we have, uh, I mean, we now have to meet online, but uh, this is like one of the questions I will always ask in class and see how you react to it. And most of the students will see it, that the column space of A and the column space of J are actually different because, okay, because for example, this column, this C1, C1, right? This column, uh, one zero four one. This is actually an element of this column space because the column space of A are all the linear combinations of the column. So in particular, one zero four one is an element of the set. Now you can see, no matter what you do with the uh, vectors that is in the column space of J, there's just no way for you to get one zero four one because all these vectors, column vectors here, the last entries is always zero. So no matter how you linearly combining all these uh, uh, column vectors of J, of matrix J, the last entries here has to be zero, but the last entry here is not zero. So no matter how hard you try, uh, by linearly combining the D vectors right here, there's just no way you get one, zero, four, one. So they're essentially very different sets. They are not the same set. Right, you can have elements that is in A, in C A, but that element is not in C J. So these are very different sets. So these are very different sets. So the answers for for these questions right here are the two column space the same? Nope, the two column space are not the same. All right. Now for a very interesting reason, even though uh, the column space are not the same, but okay, but. Okay, so I have the entire explanations, which I'm not going to go through, but it is in the notes that so you should uh, uh, read up, but it's very interesting. So the uh, interesting observation is that D1, D2, and D4, right? We can see that. This is the, comp the relationship. Once you have D1, D2, and D4, you'll see that D3 is related to this D1, D2, and D4. D5 is related to D1, D2, and D4, and D6 are uh, related to D1, D2, and D4 in this precise manner. Now, I'm claiming that the matrix A, right, if you change out all the D to C, they are still going to be the same, which means that, okay, uh, apparently the third column in matrix A is related to the first two column of matrix A like this, exactly parallel, exactly parallel to what happened for the J matrix. Okay, same with C5, same with C6. So even though the spaces are different, even though column space and A and column space and of J are different, but the relationship among the column vectors in J uh, is the same, exactly the same uh, kind of relationship they have for the column space of A. So this is important because, because this is important because now, from looking at, so from looking at, from looking at matrix J, right? We know that this, this, and this are definitely independent. So we know that this, this, and this is also definitely independent because they share the same relationship. They don't have the same column space though, but the relationship exhibit uh, in the column space of J is going to be exactly parallel to uh, the relationship that you have for column space of A. So for example, right, this D3 is three times of this minus this. And you can see that the C3 is three times of this minus this. It's hard to see from here because this computation is hard, but it's so easy to see here, but the relationship carry over. So once we know that, once we know that, uh, we will say, so be very careful. We will say that because this, this, this are independent. So therefore this, this and this are independent, but they are not the same space. So what is the column space of A? Well, column space of A is spanned by these three vectors. The rest are redundant, and these three vectors are independent. 
So these three vectors form a basis for the column space of A. So these three vectors, so let me erase everything here. So these three vectors right here, these three vectors form a basis for the column space of A. You don't read it from here though. Here only give you the information about their relationship, but the exact vectors, these vectors from A, these three vectors, actually form a basis for the column space of A. So this is how we use it, it's slightly different. Actually, in fact, very different. For, for the two vector spaces you have before, we always look at the RREF matrix. We only look at the RREF matrix. We don't look at A anymore. Everything we get from null space and the row space from this REF matrix will be the answers for this one. So we never refer back to matrix A. We always look at the RREF of A when we look at the null space and the row space of A. But, but, okay, when we look at column space, we never look at the RREF matrix for the column space. We never look at the REF matrix. We use that only to refer relationship uh, among the vectors in J, but we will look at the matrix A, original matrix A, to get the basis for the column space of A. So that's the difference, okay? So that's the difference. So you can see from here, you can see from here, because D1, D2, D4 form a basis, uh, form a basis, uh, C1, C2, C4 form a basis for J, C1, C2, C4 will form a basis for A because the relationships are the same. This is also another thing that we say that the row operations preserve the row space but destroy the column space. So the column space for uh, the matrix J and the matrix A, they are different because the row operation destroyed it. Row operations preserve the row space but row operations destroy the column space. All right, so this is very critical uh, observation, very critical observation. And um, I kind of like wanted to stop here, but uh, let's say one more thing though. So this like very, very important. People always say the wrong thing. They will be like, oh, the column space of A, right, has a basis. These are the basis. These are not the basis for column space of A because these are very different thing, okay? The whole span of the column vectors here cannot even get this one. So they're very different. Okay, now um, the number of vectors in the basis uh, for the row space of A and column space of A is the same though. This is like, this is like uh, another key observation that we were going to look at it um, in the next video. So let me just say it one more time. If you look at the uh, row space, so the row space of the matrix J, so let's look at this problem again. So the row space of A uh, has the basis, this basis, this basis, this vector has a basis, okay? And the, uh, the column space of A has this as its basis, this as its basis, and this as its basis, which is basically same as counting the pivot, like this, this, this. We are not saying they are the same, we're just counting the number, right? So these have three vectors in the row space of, in the column space of A as a basis. This is the three vectors that will form the basis for the uh, row space of A, and they always the same number. This because they kind of like all related to the pivots. So these are position of the pivots. This, this, this give you the number of vectors in the basis of the row space of A, and this, 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 which is uh, information contained here, give you the number of vectors for the basis, number of vectors in the basis for the column space of A. And they are always the same because they are always tracking the, tr tracking the pivot. We will say more about this in the next video when we look at the dimensions. But now uh, the grand conclusions is that uh, if you are asked to find a basis for a matrix, you always row reduces it. So matrix A, what are the basis uh, for the null space? You always row reduces it and get answer from here. What is the basis for the row space? You also row reduces and get answer from here. But what is the basis for the column space? Oh, then you don't look at it anymore. You look at the original matrix, but obviously you still use the REF matrix to help you, but the answers will be here, here, and here. So that's the, uh, the uh, uh, everything you need to know for this video uh, on how to find identify basis uh, for this row space, column space, and null space of a matrix. And I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much.